I'm Nathan Matias, the founder of Civil Servant. Uh, my name is Mason English. I'm an MD, MBA student, and I'm one of the mods over at Our Politics. We actually have a couple here as well if you have any other questions. Uh, right. So a little bit about Our Politics. Our Politics is one of the earlier subreddits created, and I say that it's one of the defaults. It was a default through 2013. Reasoning for that is that it has a unique link with the type of users that are members of our politics. So Reddit being a young, technology savvy kind of draw for a user base, our politics has the same kind of thing, leading to those kind of users being a little bit more liberal. We have more liberal users, a higher percentage. Kind of a graph overview table here, liberal users comprise a larger percentage of these our politics users while conservatives will comprise a smaller percentage. This being a huge <laughs> simplization of this thing. But through those users and through their voting, they can control what is seen and what is not seen. So a liberal user as a block will downvote more often than not something they don't agree with necessarily. Just for example, two types of comments up here that rules and laws apply only to poor people and liberals, duh, versus what's the actual proof for the Russian hacking? One's asking a good question, one is just kind of a troll. But because of that type of user voting, one's gonna be seen and the one asking possibly a legitimate question is not gonna be seen. Whoa. Going on, liberal users less associated with incivility just as a whole, while the conservative users, just from what we've seen moderating, are more associated with this incivility. Liberal users feel like they have lost throughout this past election, throughout the inauguration, over the last year of uh, politics, liberal users feel like they've lost and control the voting. This has led to a large degree of incivility throughout the election and up to now. We have attempted to combat this with big giant sticky posts addressing the community directly, we even stole the sticky comment thing from science to try and help with that. We weren't able to see much change, but we weren't running a statistical model and data to actually observe that kind of thing. Reddit can be great. At its best, it has great community reporting, users that will go in and build amazing comments that will source themselves and really show what Reddit can do. At its worst, partisan voting and these partisan times we currently live in are leading to a hindrance to the discussion. So working with Nate, we wanted to check in specifically on downvotes. Do downvote buttons cause unruly online behavior and can hiding these downvotes prevent unruly behavior? So let me unpack that puzzle. Um, so why would we think that downvote buttons make things worse? And part of that comes back to uh, a question that we are still asking, that's still kind of an open question about how we design online platforms. Um, early in the 2000s, there, when the downvote button was invented, um, a researcher named Cliff Lampy, who's here in the room, uh, did one of the earliest studies of these voting systems and found that yes, if you ask people to vote on content, uh, on average, uh, you know, people can separate high and low quality comments. Um, analysis suggests a qualified yes. And Cliff, we're still trying to figure out exactly what that qualified means, as often happens with research. Many years later, a further study by uh, Justin Chang and a number of collaborators looked at political discussions across four news sites and actually found that when people get downvoted, um, they come back more frequently and their future comments are lower quality. They feel punished like a minority and um, perhaps, you know, the, the study didn't necessarily look at their motivations, but perhaps uh, people come back and then um, kind of lash out or complain and it escalates from there. So uh, we wanted to work with the our politics community to find out if hiding the downvote button would actually uh, improve the quality of conversation. 
and particularly look at the effect on the future behavior of people who are commenting for the first time in the community. Now, Reddit moderators are able to hide the downvote, but it's a bit complicated because they're only able to do it for some users. And also, um, they're only able to do it for the whole community at once. So the first thing we did was uh, we basically set up a randomized trial where on some days the downvote button was visible in comments and other days it wasn't. And then we also kind of acknowledged that desktop users wouldn't see the downvote and consequently we hoped that there would be a lower share of downvotes on those days, even if mobile users who are about, uh, we estimated about 65% of uh, uh, participants during that period would still be able to downvote as normal. So it's kind of a messy first pass, but at the same time, this is the tool that moderators had at their disposal, and we wanted to find out what, if any, difference this made, especially because a lot of communities have tried this tactic of hiding downvotes over the years. So here are some of the early findings that we have from this pilot study, which is not in any way the kind of final word on this. The first thing we did was to look at whether hiding downvotes actually affected the vote scores for comments. Because the way that Reddit works, if your uh, comment receives more upvotes, you're given something called a higher score. It's a little obfuscated by the platform, but it still is useful sometimes for analysis. And then the visibility of your comment, it's pushed higher in the discussion if you have more upvotes. It's further down in the discussion if you have more downvotes, and in some cases, it's even hidden by the platform. So key to our research was to find out if hiding this button would even affect the score at all. And we found that uh, when we monitored the first 10 comments in discussion and took snapshots of their score over time, um, hiding the downvotes changed the score a little bit. It made the score a little higher. It reduced the share of downvotes, but not quite as much as we were hoping for. The next thing we looked at was the effect on whether a person's comment would ever get a negative score. And there we found a more sharp distinction that you know, in that community, uh, you know, somewhere around 6% uh, of the first 10 comments would get a negative score at some point, and we were able to reduce that by half by hiding the downvotes. So we were able to see that hiding the downvotes does have an effect on people's voting behavior, and that's the first part of the study. We then wanted to know if uh, people who commented for the first time in the community um, uh, behaved differently in the future if they commented on a day where the, the share of downvotes was reduced. And we did find that, similarly to what Justin Cheng found, uh, people who uh, do comment for the first time uh, in a, on a day where there is no downvoting, um, they actually are less likely to come back. Um, that people who re are you know, more likely to receive downvotes are much more likely to come back and comment a second time. I should, I should step that back. Not much more likely, slightly more likely to come back. It's actually a fairly small percentage point change. Um, and then we were curious, like does this add up to any difference in how be people behave in the future. And we looked at the chance of that person's future comments to be removed by moderators. And there, we couldn't distinguish any effect that was di differential, different from chance. So it might have been possible with a larger sample size or with better measurements of the quality of people's comments. It's possible that the effect is really small and we just weren't able to see it. But using the statistical tools that we had, we weren't able to observe any systematic differences in the future behavior of first-time commenters coming from uh, days where we hid the downvotes and other days. So what do we learn from a null result like this? In our discussion with the community, many people asked, why do it if you don't necessarily get the answer you're looking for? There are a few, uh, there are few uh, reasons why we might value this study. The first is that we learned that hiding the downvote button doesn't have the dramatic effect on the ultimate votes that are given that I think a lot of people hope for. And that's really valuable. Moderators hope that maybe hiding that button will really affect the votes. Not so much. 
It's possible that if we were able to uh, affect voting across mobile and desktop, it would make more of a difference. We don't know. Uh, on top of that, um, we, we found that while hiding down votes at least uh, has some effects, uh, it doesn't have very much of effect. So it's not a panacea to the conflicts that we've already heard described uh, happening in the community. So as the community thinks about other uh, things that it could do, downvoting might be part of it. It may be possible that with a, a more reliable way to remove the downvote button, there might be new ways to um, study this issue. But for what communities can do now, this doesn't seem to have the effects that people are looking for. And on top of that, we learned a lot about how to measure these things, the things that people care about, and how to uh, do work with a community in a politically contentious situation so that it can happen with the consent and transparency of the community, for which I'm incredibly grateful for the Our Politics uh, subreddit for. So as you have questions about how we can improve political conversation online, we'd love to talk to you. And you can reach us at civilservant.io. Thanks.